Hello, this is Joe Reinhardt, and this demo is from Train Signal. It's critical within troubleshooting OSPF to understand the tools that are available to you. The best and most common tools to use are the commands show and debug. We're going to look at various ones in this particular section to better acquaint you with what they can show you. First, we're going to review show commands. As with EIGRP and practically any other protocol, the show IP protocols command can be particularly helpful. It will display your OSPF status and process ID. It will show the different area types are configured, normal, stub, NSSA, and so forth. It will show you any protocols that are being redistributed, what networks are being advertised, and neighbors or gateways. It's a much broader show command, but it's still extremely helpful. It can be very helpful in troubleshooting neighbor relationships, for example. For instance, if neighbors or gateways are missing that you're expecting, it'll be able to show you that. Missing routes, problems with summarization, and problems with filtering. Another helpful command is the show IP route OSPF command. It shows you the routes that are being received from neighbors, the administrative distance, the cumulative cost metric to reach a particular subnet, and whatever the route source and interface is. It's going to be helpful in troubleshooting missing routes, summarization issues, filtering problems, and also just general troubleshooting. Show IP OSPF interfaces is particularly helpful because it will show you all the interfaces that have been configured and are participating in OSPF, the network types, remember broadcast, non-broadcast, and so forth, the neighbor count, authentication types, and timer values. And it goes without saying that this can be helpful in troubleshooting neighbor relationships, local configuration issues, and routing problems. Show IP OSPF neighbors, helpful in figuring out local configuration issues and neighbor relationships. It will actually display active fully adjacent neighbors with their router IDs, their IP addresses and interfaces, the dead timers, and what the state is, full, xstart, and so forth. Remember, if anything's stuck in that particular state, anything other than full, then you know there might be an issue. It also shows the state of the designated router and backup designated router that it may be connected to. If it's the DR, it'll say, for instance, full slash DR. If it's a backup designated router, it'll say full slash BDR. And if it's just another device that's neither, it'll say full slash DR other, meaning it is neither the DR or the BDR. The show IPS OSPF database command will show you the entire contents of the link state database. It'll show the LSA types per area, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, for example, the router that's advertising that particular network, the link ID, specifically the subnet, and the age that's in the routing table. It's helpful in troubleshooting missing routes, filtering problems, and general troubleshooting. Another command that's very specific to OSPF is the command show IP OSPF border routers. It shows the router ID, the advertising router, the area it belongs to, whether it's an area border router or an autonomous system boundary router. It'll actually list them all out and the cost to reach them. This can be helpful in troubleshooting missing routes, filtering problems, and general troubleshooting. For instance, if a, an external route is missing, this would be one way to be able to tell you if something is awry with the ABR or ASBR. In this case, it'd be ASBR. And finally, Another command that's very helpful is the show IP OSPF command. It shows the process ID, the configured areas, the number types of areas, the ranges of those areas, configured area authentication. Something else that, that's helpful is it shows the number of times the SPF algorithm has been executed. If you look at a particular area and you see a very high number of SPF calculations, it could be a flapping router or an interface with an issue. It also shows you interfaces per area on the router. It's helpful for missing routes, filtering problems, and general troubleshooting. Debug commands can also be particularly helpful in determining cause of particular issues. The debug IP OSPF adjacency can help you with debugging neighbor adjacency issues. It's helpful in troubleshooting, obviously, neighbor relationships, routing update issues, LSA types, for example, and stub router problems. The debug IP OSPF events helps you debug network events. It can, it'll show you the different things that are going on with the network from an OSPF standpoint. It can help you with routing, update issues, convergence issues, and interface flapping. 
And another thing that's helpful is the debug IP SPF hello. It helps you debug neighbor adjacencies. It shows how often the hellos are happening and what's involved with that. This can help you with troubleshooting neighbor relationships, configuration issues, and because the hellos are used for DR and BDR election, it can help you with those issues as well. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training, please visit www.trainsignal.com.